Hello, welcome to Parasha Study, Rashi on Parashat Hayi Sarah. Today we'll deal with an issue that's well known to a lot of people that causes a lot of people sometimes a little bit of frustration. And that is the Torah after Yitzhak gets married to Rivka. The Torah resumes its story about Abraham Avinu and the Torah tells us by Yosef Abraham, by Kahisha, Torah, Abraham continued, and right, he married another woman by Yosef, probably because he married off his hawk, and now he continues, he gets married himself after Sarah is already dead, he marries a woman, and her name is Kitura. Comes Rashi and comments, Kitura, Zuha God, that's her God, it's the same person. Why is she called Kitura? Her ways, her actions, her deeds are pleasant as the Keturit. Where Keturit, Ketura, there where it comes from, and he gives another reason. Also, she tied herself up. The word Katad in Aramaic means Kashad to tie in Hebrew. And she tied herself up. She didn't get involved as any other man from when Abraham sent her away prior in Pedekap Aleph until he brings her back in Pedekap Hay. And it's quite vexing to a lot of people. Rashi, what are you doing? Why can't somebody actually be who the Torah says they are? Why does it always have to be somebody else that maybe we have met before Then you're insisting she's called Ketura? And it's actually interesting. I think, it, I think the problem is really intensified by the fact that in Midrash Tan Humad, there's actually a Mahlokit. According to what opinion, Ketura is Hagad and Hahamim Omri. The, the dominant opinion, the majority opinion says, no, it's Isha Ahedet Haita. So why did Rashi specifically come and choose the opinion that Ketura is Hagad? The commentators try to deal with it. One of the suggestions is the fact that when you read the Pasuk, by Yosef Abraham Ikahisha, okay, and her name is Kitura, or Shema Kitura. It seems like the Torah is trying to tell you a grand introduction, and then it doesn't tell you anything. Shema Kitura. Who, who's Kitura? What does that do for me? I don't know. Oh, however, the Ramban explains this phenomenon in an interesting way. So here we have the words of the Ramban. I'd like to present you the words of the Ramban, and maybe at the end of the conclusion of the words of the Ramban, we can understand what was Rashi's motivation. Ramban says, right? She was a regular woman from the people of Kena'an, and Abraham married her. If you're going to say she came from the Pilishtim, or from Egypt, she wasn't from Mishpaha Kena'an. He didn't make an effort. The Torah doesn't tell us. He sent out of the way to go find a woman who was not from Kena'an. So why didn't he care about marrying a woman? Who's from Canaan after spending the whole parasha ensuring that Yitzhak is an Arab one? And Ramban continues and he says, okay. Once he had Zera Yitzhak, he had the Brit, he has to worry about the lineage that's going to come from Yitzhak with the Brit of Hashem. But everybody else, since they're not part of the Brit with Hashem anyway, he doesn't need to worry about. And you know, it continues, the, the Ramban improves, brings a second proof. Number one, A, it doesn't say he sent away, but also, other times when people are marrying a foreign woman, it says, where they're coming from. But here it only mentions the name. It doesn't mention, why it doesn't need to tell you where it came because she came from where Abraham is, from the people of the Kanani, and therefore it doesn't need to specify where she came from. So too the Torah does, but it doesn't care about the lineage of the person. So the Rabban introduces us an idea that perhaps can help us understand what was behind Rashi's motivation to say that Keturah is a god. The Rabban is trying to answer the question, why is it okay that Abraham can marry someone from Kenan? After they considered Arur, in Baruch be the big Barur, as Rashi comments, keep in mind, Kenan is cursed from Noah, Arur Kenan, and Abraham is Baruch, and therefore Abraham is Makbid, that Eliezer or his servant will not send, will not send, will not go to look for a wife from the people of Kenan. Comes Rashi and says, so it's inconceivable that Abraham Avinu himself 
or to marry someone from Canaan. Then Aban says, no, it's okay, because his lineage is not going to be is not going to be part of the Brit with Hashem. But this is Abraham Avinu we're talking about. You want somebody who is Baruch, to be living with somebody who's Arur. And I think this is the motivation that she has to explain that Kitura Zuha God. Notice what that she is telling us. Her actions will be fitting someone who married Abraham Avinu. She was loyal to Abraham Avinu. This makes sense. After we talk about finding the wife for Yitzhak, that is all full of the ideas of Hesed, it doesn't end up that all of a sudden Abraham Avinu doesn't care what he's doing towards the end of his life. And keep in mind, he's 137. He dies at 175. He has 38 years of life left. It seems to be that Amban's approach is very difficult. All of a sudden, you're telling me that she, Abraham doesn't care. And therefore, I think that coming of the context of where we're coming from, it makes a lot of sense to say, God. This is in line with a different stream that Nashi has, strain of thought that Nashi has, that Ishmael dies a Sadiq, Ishmael is righteous, he's not considered a Yerasha throughout Nashi's commentary. Hagad merits a Sim al Achashin, that Ishmael and Hagad merit the miracle of El Wahid or E. Therefore, it's Haq goes to pray there when the Malach appeared to Hagad and Ishmael, and therefore. That she continuing this approach to saying Hagad Ishmael are not fully excluded from the family of Abraham for heritage, yes, but the fact that Abraham Avinu had a connection to them and deeply cared about them, definitely he did, and therefore he takes her back. And when Sarah dies, he goes, he remarries her once it's appropriate time to do so. I think this is a worthwhile idea to think about how that she can be bothered by it, not just the Pasuk itself, the words but also the concepts behind the Pasuk, and that leads him to following one of the two opinions in the Midrash, choosing one over another, and have a good day.